Hey guys, thanks for tuning in to another video on ForgottenWeapons.com. I'm Ian McCollum, and today I am joined by my friend Joel of Joel'sGulch.com. Uh, I've known Joel for a very long time, and I wanted to get a second opinion for today's video, and I thought he'd be a great person to give us one. So, what's that pistol? This is a Bond arm, Bond Bull Pup? <laughs> it is it's a... sort of the latest uh, generation of the Boberg of sad memory. Yes, this is a Bond Arms Bullpup 9. It's the 9mm version, and it's the short version. I believe they're working on or shortly going to be releasing a long version. But there's, of course, lots of, as you said, sad history behind this. But one of the things that Bond Arms claims that I don't see a lot of people actually trying out is they say that this has less recoil to it than comparable guns of the same size and caliber. That their rear feeding system um, and the design of the slide and the recoil system all come together to offer both a slide that's easier to rack than other guns of its of comparable size, and lighter recoil. So lower that, that lighter recoil comes specifically in the form of a lower slide velocity. Okay. So we're going to try that today, and then we're going to try out a SIG P365, a CAR PM9, and a Rohrbaugh R9. All guns that are kind of in the same overall class. So the Rohrbaugh is actually a little smaller than the, the Bond Arms. The other two are the same size, maybe slightly longer in a few dimensions. But um, this should give us a good idea how these compare to that. And I personally have never fired any of these three guns, and I've only put a little bit of ammo through one of the, the Bond Arms. So I think you're about the same, Joel, right? You haven't. Oh, absolutely. I, my thing, as you know, is more desert living and low budget off gridding. So I tend to be more on the big bore revolver. Oh. You, you just <laughs> open carry. You don't bother with this concealed nonsense. Yeah, sorry. So Out here you concealed don't carry it. really isn't my field, but it sounds interesting. All right. Well, let's give it a try. That's the car. Little baby gun. Yeah, this is the what? That's a Roarbaugh R9. Roarbaugh. Never heard of it. Don't break it. It costs a thousand dollars. Teeny little sights. Holy <laughs> I thought the car was flippy. Oops. I gotta tell you, I shoot a 44 special that doesn't kick around that much. And this is kind of jammed. When it rattles that much, there usually means there's a there's a case in there somewhere. Apparently this one just rattles. Costs extra that way, I guess. And also doesn't lock back. I don't think that would ever be my favorite pistol. <laughs> I don't think I blame you. I don't know that I'm looking forward to shooting that one. I can't even get the magazine out with, without a third hand. Yeah. All right, last one, which is... Sig, Sig? Pete. Sig. Ooh. Oh, we like that. That's got a decent trigger. We like that a lot. We want one. 
That's more like it. That's a pistol. All right, so overall thoughts. These three are roughly the same experience. You have to identify which three you're talking about. Like everything except the Rohrbaugh? No, including the Rohrbaugh. The Rohrbaugh, the car, and the what used to be a Boberg have very long triggers, basically double elk shed only. Um, very flippy little guns. Hard to keep on target. Um, the SIG, very crisp, almost 1911. And you just wanted to shoot this gun. Okay. Easy to keep on target. Doesn't, not trying to flip itself out of your hand. I understand little gun, nine millimeter. Okay, you're gonna get some, you're gonna get some recoil, but. Uh, that gun stands alone. The other three, including the one we're here to, to evaluate, kind of together, wouldn't be my favorite thing, frankly. Okay. Any discernible difference in recoil handling on the Boberg or the Bond Arms compared to the others? <sighs> it's not as bad as the Robot. That's about as much as I can say about it. All right. That in the car, same ballpark. All right. Now it's my turn to try. Sure. All right. I think I am going to start with the car. Just... For kicks. Okay. I think that sets a fairly nice baseline for compact 9mm. Now let's try the Boberg. Bond Arms. Okay, fairly similar. So close between those two, I'm not sure I can make any real distinction. Now, having watched you do it, Joel, I suspect I know what's what I'm in for with this little guy. One to get the, there we go. Okay, ow. We can do this. That, that's just downright unpleasant. Yes, it is. I can understand someone wanting it if it was, you have to have the smallest gun ever, ever, ever in nine parabellum, but, oof. All right. Now, SIG P365. That kind of handles more like a miniature real gun than a small gun. <laughs> um, I'm going to put another, another mag through the Bond Arms right now with this in Yeah, mind. yeah, yeah. got a super long reset too. It has a very long trigger to it and that's something that the uh, the SIG really excels at. It has a great trigger in the SIG. All right so I think what we need to do now is do some high speed and let's see how well first I guess I should say overall I'm gonna come to the same basic conclusion. The, the Roarbaugh is without any doubt the worst of these guns to shoot and then I had a hard time finding all that much difference between the other three. If I had to rank them, I think I would put the Boberg in the middle. Honestly, to me, the SIG shot a little, handled a little bit nicer than this and then the car. So I think we need to go and do some high speed and find out what the slides are actually doing um, when we are able to look at them up close. Uh, we have gone through and we did some slow motion 
filming, um, all at 3,000 frames per second, so very slow motion. And uh, by the way, this is all using exactly the same ammo. We're using Winchester White Box. Um, it was ammo actually provided by Bond Arms, and it is ammo specifically recommended by them. That's the one. Uh, in our experience so far, probably not recommended by Roarball. Uh, we both had malfunctions <laughs> with the stuff in, in the Roarball. Um, however, exact same ammo in all the guns, same position, same shooter. We tried to keep everything as, as identical across all the, the shooting as possible. So what we found in the high speed is that, in fact, the Bond Arms does kick up, does uh, lift the least. And in fact, does have the longest time required for the slide to fully open. So the slowest average slide velocity. Not by a lot, I <laughs> grant you. A couple um, of frames. Yep, the Boberg, the Bond Arms, I keep, we both keep calling it the Boberg, um, took 25 frames at 3000 frames per second to fully open. Uh, the SIG was 23, the CAR was 22, and the Roarball was 19. So a very substantial difference between the Bond and the Roarball. Uh, I think we both, obviously, that was, that was pretty blatant when we were shooting. Yeah. So, um, so what do you think? I mean, our, our high-speed photography contradicted both of our impressions after shooting. Well, they say you shouldn't argue with the camera, but we went back out and shot again afterward, and I'm arguing with the camera a little bit here, just just a tiny bit. These two, as far as shooting experience is concerned, these two guns, the car and the Bond, very, very similar. Um, they've got different actions. This one's got a longer trigger, but it's very smooth trigger, really it is. nice smooth trigger, if, yep. if you like a long DAO trigger, which I do not. Um, but as far as just shooting is concerned, blindfolded, I'd have a hard time telling the difference. The difference I felt between these two, and especially after we went out and did a little more follow-up after the high speed, was that the Bond Arms doesn't move in my hand in, in between shots. You did mention that, and this one it, wants to squirm around a bit. Yes, this, and this one is significantly narrower as well, and I think the consequence of that is it, it moves around in the hand in between shots, and so there's this element of Every once in a while, you have to kind of fix your grip, which you don't really in the Bond arms. The problem is that the time I took fixing my grip was pretty much the same as the time I took having to reset the trigger on this, because <laughs> it's a really long trigger and a really long reset. Yeah. So, uh, now what about the, the roar bar? Do we even need to say anything more oh, about the roar bar? Please, must we really? It's, it's too much cartridge for a little tiny gun. Yeah. And, yeah. John Henry, the steel driver man, couldn't <laughs> not limp wrist that pistol. I'm sorry. And it doesn't forgive limp wristing. It jammed on both of us. Yeah. Yeah, we put a grand total of maybe 50 rounds through it. I think yeah. less than that. We if, probably put like 30 that. through it um, and, and got two malfunctions. Yeah. Both of which were a Identical. gnarly pain. Yeah, exactly the same malfunction, which was it didn't fully eject the case. But the slide went all the way back started to push the next round out of the mag. So you had to hold the slide backward and hold the magazine release backward and well, then pry it out. The magazine it out. was a very, very annoying thing to try yeah. and fix. Any so. of these other guns, you push the button, the magazine drops. Yeah. With that one, I... <laughs> Now, the thing is, if we put these side by side, well, they're pretty much the same size, really. Um, however, the robot is definitely narrow. The one place where the Bond is not smaller um, than these other guns is width. They put this big, wide wood grip on it. And I kind of wonder why, if the goal is concealment, although I think it does a good job of stabilizing the gun in your hand and making it, feels it more good comfortable in your hand. to shoot. It does feel good in your hand. Yeah. So what about the SIG? <laughs> There's a reason these three have moved to this side of the table and this one has stayed here, and that is that this one is in a class by itself. That one's in a class by itself in a bad way. <laughs> I, we both decided. We, we may have some issues after the camera's <laughs> off here. If, I, if, if these were the only four concealed carry guns in the world, mm -hmm. and I got to pick whichever one, there would be no question. Yeah. These two would be neck and neck for two and three. This, this one's the winner. Yeah. I love this trigger. 
Yeah. It is 1911-esque. It's very crisp, very short. Just bang, that's all. It is by far the best trigger I've ever run into it just, in a gun that size. It works. Yeah. It's got good sights. It's got a good grip. It's got almost double the mag capacity. It's oh, yeah. And let's, let's not forget magazines. that it's a double stack. So. And look how narrow this is compared to this. Yeah, it's actually got a double stack mag, and it's still narrower than the, the Bond Bullpup 9. What's interesting to me, so we came into this with a very specific goal of determining, does the mechanism on the Bond arms actually do what they say it does and reduce muzzle flip and felt recoil? The camera says it does. It actually does. But what makes this more interesting to me is when you, you have to take that question almost out of, you can't just look at that in isolation because there are a lot of other elements that go into what makes a good usable pistol. And the Bond Arms does that bit really well. It really does. That one little thing. Right. But then they kind of waste that potential by not having it fulfill the other things. Like the SIG does so many other things so much better that I don't really care if it's got a little more muzzle flip to it. It's clearly the better gun overall. This did two things to me that would have been show, would have been deal breakers, even if I hadn't already had some experience with the earlier Boberg. Okay. Uh, the first thing is the, is the ammunition sensitivity. Don't tell me what brand of ammunition I have to use. Uh, sorry, no. Second, I managed to jam this bad yes. just by short stroking it. Yeah. I've never had an auto, a semi-automatic pistol do that to me before. And it baffled me. I'm saying, <laughs> what, what's wrong? Why won't, this, why won't this chamber? And it never would. Yeah. I had to drop the mag and just do a complete clear. So the problem with this is because of this backward acting mechanism of pulling the cartridge out of the magazine, what happens is it pulls the cartridge out and then it has, has a little elevator that pushes the cartridge vertically up into the breech face and under the extractor. And it kind of goes pop fully into the breech face and then it goes straight forward into the chamber, which in theory fixes a lot of potential feed issues because it doesn't really matter what your bullet geometry is. You're not dealing with feed lips, a feed ramp to try and get the bullet in. However, it introduces a possibility that doesn't exist on any other conventional pistol where if you, you can pull the slide back enough that it will grab the next cartridge and try to pull it, start pulling it back for the next round, but it doesn't quite pop the first round all the way into the breech face. And then you end up with this problem where the gun's jammed, not fully back, but not in battery, and you can't pull it farther back, I think because it's trying to pull the next cartridge out. So it can't go farther backward, but it can't go forward because the bullet's not all the way up into the, the breech face. And the only thing you can do is drop the mag and kind of do this, you know, and then rack it hard to pop that cartridge, the first cartridge up under the extractor and then put the mag back in. It's, it's an interesting problem that unfortunately to my mind counteracts the very real claim of the Boberg, of the Bond Arms, that it's uh, the slide requires less force to rack, which it does. But if, you tr if you're not able to, you know, if you don't have the hand, the wrist strength to rack a pistol slide and you go to use bond, I think you run the risk of pulling it back until you hit that last bit of force and go, oh, that, that got hard, it must be done, let go of it, and then you jam the gun up. Yeah. And I just, I don't remember that ever happening with anything else. So they, yeah. they've managed to invent a unique jam. Two unique ones. Okay. The other one being it pulls the cartridge, the, the case off. Well, that, the that's not jamming, that's just, well, what the hell just happened when, when that's, powder yeah. runs out the... Okay, yeah. So, if, you, if you call that a jam, yes, yeah, two jams. Two completely unique ways to jam a pistol. Which right. isn't really what we're going for. No, not, not so much. It's super cool, though. It's different. It's a conversation piece, I can tell you that. Yeah. So we came into this trying to answer one distinct question, and then answered it, and then came to the opposite conclusion regardless. It Sorry. wouldn't be the first thing I'd reach for. Yeah, me too. It's different, but different isn't automatically good. You said I'm picturing there's, there's that mean picture of like three forks and then a fourth fork with all the times like this <laughs> and it's got a gash well, on no, it. No, it's no, like, no, it's not just because you're different doesn't mean you're special. It, shooting this, you could get used to it. It's not a bad shooting pistol. No, actually, it's a quite pleasant shooting. Gun. Yeah, it yeah. just but it. So is this. Way so is this. 
Um, it doesn't bring anything new except bad things. Yeah. And that's a shame because not a bad pistol. You got half an inch more barrel. It's just weird. And Ooh, uh, it, we keep coming back to, well, the barrel's longer. Not much longer. So? Yeah. If I wanted a long pistol, I'd carry this. <laughs> this is true. I don't know what else to say. I think that pretty well sums it up. I feel bad for Bond Arms. They sent this pistol. I'll be sending it back. Um, but, so, if people want to find out more about uh, living out as a hermit in the desert, how do they do that? <laughs> well, they should find someone who knows what the hell he's talking about. Or they could go to www.joelsgulch.com. Awesome. So, like I said, Joel's been a friend of mine for a very long time and uh, lives up here uh, on the property where I also have a house built. So uh, check it out. He's got a lot of cool commentary about the, the strange ways of living in the middle of nowhere in the desert. So hopefully you guys enjoyed the video. A little bit different than our normal fare, but uh, something that was an interesting question that I wanted to address. Thanks for watching.